Hey everybody, this is a little pre-video introduction to what I'm going to be doing today. This is my third competition entry into Girl Painting's 7,000 subscriber competition on how to do a painting tutorial. And today I'm going to be doing Dark Eldar Racks. I've already finished painting them all up and I'm actually going to be showing you videos from the beginning, clips from the beginning of the video, but I just wanted to say that these were a little bit hard to do because the fine cast models that I received had a lot of flash and a lot of mold lines to them that weren't immediately apparent, like here in between this guy's needles on his back. and. They were a little bit hard to clean. There were a lot of mold lines on all of the, the skirts they got, so those were difficult to find too when you first are looking at them, but then when you base coat them and undercoat them and then you find them, they're a little bit frustrating to, to have to work around and, and clean up. So those were the only real big difficulties in putting these guys together. The models fit together fine. They've got some great options for for anything that you don't use. Like I decided to use this liquefier gun, but I could have used the hex rifle or something else equally awesome that they include the options for. And yeah, that's it. So hope you enjoy the rest of the video and hope it's of some use to you, especially those of you out there who collect dark Eldar racks or grotesques or anything else that are, you know, homunculus based. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs> what up, Tubies? It's your Warboss Tay. Today we're going to be doing a how to paint Warboss tutorial on these new fine cast racks. Well, they're not really new. In fact, I've actually had them for a while, but I just couldn't bring myself to get around to painting them. I don't know why. But I figure, in honor of Spookytoberfest, we might as well get to work on these Frankenstein y like creations. They, they evoke a very Frankenstein patched together feel, especially this guy with the little baby head next to his head. Oh my goodness. Um, so, I've got five of my racks and I base coated them all. And then what I did was, let's start with this guy on the end. <clears throat> I base coated them all in black and then I painted all of the flesh colors with Deneb Stone foundation color. Then, I washed all of the flesh colors with Ogren Flesh. And I noticed that with Ogren Flesh over Deneb Stone, you get a very pale, pale looking skin tone. This is kind of what I also do for my Dark Eldar. But for this, you want to go a little bit more with the Ogren Flesh than you normally would. Then what I did was I highlighted, back the, highlighted the skin back up with some Deneb Stone. And then I painted all the silver, so the weapons, weapon bits, bolt gun metal, any of the rings, like a lot of them have rings and spikes sticking out of their armor. And I painted most of the rims of, of things like the cuffs, the helmet have these rims. So I painted them, oh and on the, the armor plate here in the front, I painted that with shining gold. So here's a little look at all the silver bits on my model. I also painted any tubes Dark Angels Green at this point. <laughs> and we're going to be bringing those up later. But for now, like the drug injectors in the back, the tubes leading into the weapons, the little back part of the, the gun here, it's Dark Angels Green. And then here, we're putting in a lot of steps in this one. I painted over those Dark Angel Green bits with Snot Green. And not completely, and you don't want to make it thick, you want to keep it kind of thin. But then what it does is it makes a cloudy looking brighter green effect. Okay, so I'm going to continue painting up some more steps in these models. Why don't you guys get up till there and then we will continue in the next portion of this video with the armor plates and the skirt piece. Alright, here's something interesting I found when I was painting these guys up. They all have their heads covered in this kind of material that's bolted to their skin. You can see that. So I was looking at the Games Workshop website and let me pull it up. It shows that they're all supposed to be painted black, which kind of isn't that interesting to me because their masks are black. So I decided to do something different and I went with Kemri Brown. 
So if, if you don't want to follow this scheme and you want to go strictly by what GW does, then go, go with just Chaos Black. But I decided to do Kemri Brown, and then I decided to dirty and bloody it up a little. So I added a mixture of Scorched Brown, Blood Red, uh, Scorched Brown and Red Gore, and then I just kind of splattered it around, and then I added a little bit of Blood Red, and I lightly flicked that on with my paintbrush, and then I gave the whole thing a bad at black wash. So, or not a bad at black, Devlin Mud. So this is what it will look like when you first paint it on, really bright, co brightly colored. And then when you put the wash on, it dirties it up and ties all the colors together like this. Sorry, I should have showed this model second. Okay? Then, another thing you might notice is that one of these guys has this medical pack on the back. So, the homunculus also has this as well. So, I'm going to teach you my technique for, for painting this. What you need is a little bit of shadow gray and blood red. So paint the whole thing in shadow gray, and what that's going to do is it's going to give you a f full see-through plasticky looking surface to work on. And then you can <clears throat> paint up the inside with blood red, like, like a bag of blood that's slowly dripping into his body. And if you want to highlight any of the edges of the plastic bag itself, then you can use shadow gray mixed in with space wolves gray and that'll create some nice looking highlights on the edges of the bag you can make it look reflective like it's reflecting the light all right so that is how i paint the little baggies that are covering their heads and this little blood drip bag so i'm going to continue painting these guys up and i'll see you in the next steps The next steps that I took were to paint Leviathan purple onto the skin, into the recesses and the creases. So not washing over the whole model like we did with Ogren Flesh, but just into the shadows. And that's going to give it a sickly, bruised effect that is really, really nice when it dries. You're also going to be painting the armor plates with Codex Grey, just lining the edges. And you're going to be painting the robes with Bestial Brown. And the robes also have these weird ovalish looking things that you're going to be painting the cloth part with Codex Grey to highlight. When you're done with that, you're also going to be painting all the different accessories that come on these models. So most of them have knives or stuff hanging off of them, so the knives and metallic objects just go over with bolt gun metal. This one model has a little bag hanging from it, so that I painted in Kemri Brown. And the straps I painted in Kemri Brown as well. Let's see if we can find another model to demonstrate. Here's my guy with the blood bag hanging from it. This one has some metallic, what looks like a brass knuckles, a needle. So the strap you're always going to be painting with Kemri Brown and metallic objects, either in shining gold or bolt gun metal. So I'm going to finish up and paint the rest of these guys, their robes and their armor plates. And you're also going to be painting the leggings with Codex Grey to highlight the leggings with Codex Grey. So let me see if I can find our test model here to show what that looks like. So anywhere where the light would reflect off, like where the, the raised knee is, I painted with Codex Grey. Okay, so I'll finish those off and we'll see you when that's done. All right, we're getting into the home stretch. What I've done now is I used Bad At Black to wash down everything, all of the armor plates, the metal weapons, anything that is silver metal, not gold. You want the gold to continue to pop. So just the metal, like these hooks and chains hanging from the back, and also as well as the cloak. So all of, everything we just highlighted with bestial brown, your weapon pieces, parts of the cloak, anywhere that has Codex Grey highlights. Also, you're going to start taking your Codex Grey and you're going to start highlighting the vents in the mask around the edges. And when you're done with that, you're going to wash the mask off with Bad Dab Black to tie that in. So here you can see how the Codex Grey just kind of blends into the black once you wash it with Bad Dab Black, as well as the Bestial Brown. Okay, so go ahead and use your Bad Dab Black for that. Then you're going to take your gloss coat varnish and you're going to 
paint it over the, fl the blood bag, both sides of the blood bag in the center. That'll give it a reflective plastic look, which is what we want for that. And as you can see, I've already gone ahead and I've started to base my models because our model is just about done now. Our racks are just about done. You're going to take a look now and see whether or not you want to re-highlight the bodies. If I wanted to go by more of a Games Workshop standard, I would highlight the bodies so that they don't look as shot, they don't have as much shadows, and I would give it a much paler look. But I kind of like the the shadows and the recesses and the shading, and it, I feel like it gives the models depth. So I'm going to keep it pretty much like that. And one of the things that I found, which are pretty disgusting, only this figure has it of the racks, but he's got these bone jut jutting out, bones jutting out, these protrusions jutting out of his forearms. Those are really disgusting, so if you want you can add extra purple, Leviathan purple wash to that and pop those out more. It's really gross. Okay, so I'm going to let you go ahead and do that. I'm going to finish basing my models the way they will be to match the rest of my Dark Eldar army. And we will finish this video in just a second. And there you have it. My minis are now based with their snow, snow world basing theme. And I've finished all my last detail work like highlighting and shading to tie in the colors of the robes and the armor plates. Hope you've enjoyed this War Boss tutorial on how to paint Dark Eldar racks. And I hope you continue watching. The rest of Spookytoberfest videos will be similar themed on horror, m macabre, dark, creepy, creepy videos of, of miniatures from the Warhammer Fantasy and Warhammer 40,000 line, along with a little bit of Malifaux. And again, this is my third video entry into the girl painting 7,000 subscriber competition. And I just wanted to say congratulations again to Alexandra for getting so many subscribers and that we all strive to be just like her and how much of an inspiration she is. So thanks again for watching, leave your comments below, love to read all your comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next one.